So you wouldn't know it here because of the weather outside, but is almost going to be the fall season. And the fall season is the most important time for cool season lawns. So most people probably think that in the spring after winter is when your season begins, but your cool season lawn for next year, what it's going to look like and what you can do to really improve it starts this fall. And today you're in luck because we're almost to the fall season, but we're not quite there yet. So today I wanted to give you some information on things you should be thinking about, preparing for, and then you can kind of get an idea of your program and you can really make some improvements on your yard both this year and going into next. So the first thing that I like to do at the end of the summer season is take an evaluation of what things are looking like. The summer is usually very stressful, especially this summer has been so hot, so dry in so many places. So take an assessment. What are the conditions right now and what are you seeing in your yard that you need to improve? So for me specifically, I'm gonna be talking about my fescue today and some of my higher cut turf and show you what's going on and what my plans are. And that way you can kind of adapt that plan to what you're doing in your yard as well. So here we stand with the fescue right now and I have have been doing just a little bit of watering this past week to keep this up for the end of the season, but it has really been withstanding the heat a lot better. And I did mention that at a couple videos this summer that it did do a lot better than my straight bluegrass before. We definitely do still have some stress going on. This is a first year yard. I would always anticipate that with the conditions that we've had, there's gonna be some stress going on no matter what. So if you'll see something like this spot right here, usually this is generally just some stress that's happened, either drought stress, heat stress, or sometimes you'll have some fungus things too. I don't see any widespread fungus problems or anything like that. But once things cool down and everything gets back into the actual ideal soil temperatures, ambient temperatures and everything, the grass is gonna start to get healthy again. But if you see any major patches of brown and things like that, make sure that you do get an assessment to see if you have some fungus problems going on and get that under control before it gets too bad. Another thing to pay attention to is something that I noticed that I was missing on, and that is when I did my watering, I wasn't getting very good coverage on this spot over here. Also one thing that I tested, this is the entryway to the garden. So is there compaction happening in the spot? And yes, there absolutely is. So it's a little more dried out, it's a little more stressed. These are things to just pay attention to. I need to add a little more water to this. So the other thing to think about was do you need to do any seeding, any overseeding? or are you just gonna be going more on a fertilizer program, get everything healthy that you have here, and maybe spot spray some weeds. So luckily for me in the backyard, the fescue is actually really thick at this point. It just has a few sporadic weeds here and there. So I don't really plan on doing an overseeding of this this year. It's already a really thick lawn, and I also don't plan to do any blanket spraying of any kind or anything like that. So with sporadic weeds, you can always pick them by hand if that's possible, or you can definitely just do some spot spraying of those weeds. So if you have more widespread problems with weeds, I would let the temperatures come down before you spray. Right now it's still in a pretty stressful period for a lot of people across the country, and you don't wanna be putting a lot of stress on that grass when it's really trying to just transition into cooler weather. How to make a decision on seeding would be if you have a really, really thin yard, then right now would be a time that you need to think about overseeding it. And what that means is leaving the existing turf there and overseeding new grass seed into that existing turf. I have an entire video on that right here, start to finish all the steps, everything you need to know about that. So I won't go into that on this entire video because it'll be another 14 minutes long if I do, but go ahead and check out that video. It gives you all the steps if you do need to seed on how to do that. So if you don't need to seed though and you're like me, you just have a yard that's Maybe it's not as full as you'd like. Maybe it's not as healthy looking as you'd like. Let's go into the fall program. The thing that you need to do in the fall for cool season grass is feed your lawn. And I'd love to tell you that this is an exact calendar date that you should do this, but honestly, as you can tell from the weather and how much variant goes on with that, this isn't necessarily an exact calendar date. And specifically, depending on where you live, north to south, that can change a little bit if you have cool season grass in the transition zone. Once you look at a 10 or 14 day forecast, and you see those really high temperatures starting to slide down and starting to go down a roller coaster. There might still be a few days who go up a little bit, down a little bit, but the general trend is starting to go in a downward direction. Maybe you see a few 70s in that forecast every once in a while. That was when I would start to think about the first application of putting down fertilizer after the stressful summer period. So I'm actually on that trend right now. We were pretty much at the highest of the highs today, another heat index of around 100, but the trend is going in the other direction and I actually do see a few 70s in the forecast now. So I'm gonna put down my first application of fall fertilizer today. I'm just gonna quickly show you what I use quickly put that down. Then I'll explain a little bit more about what happens after this too. So I don't know if I told you this or not, I posted this on Instagram at some point in the summer, but my trusty old friend finally gave up the ghost here and it's done for. So a lot of people said when I posted that on Instagram that, oh, you can get the new parts and just go ahead and tell Scott's that you need new parts for this thing. And 
Maybe I will, but you know, sometimes after years of use, sometimes things are just done for and you need to move on. I think I've had this thing since 2012. It did well for me. I know a lot of people have had some issues with them and streaking and things with the wheels. I didn't ever seem to have a major problem with it, but time to move on. I think I bought this maybe a year and a half ago. I've been through quite a bit of time with it actually. Uh, I wasn't using that old $30 one as much anymore. I had mainly switched to this for the most part. It's fine for me. I've had an instance where I felt like I got a little bit of streaking with this one, so maybe something was jammed in there. I don't know, otherwise for the most part, I think unless you're gonna spend like, a ton of money on a really nice spreader, then whatever gets the job done for you, I think is gonna be fine. This is gonna be my first application of Grower G. It is the new fertilizer we have out from Lawn Supply Company, my brand. First application to this, this is a 13013. I have plenty of phosphorus in my soil here, so I don't need to add more phosphorus. 13013 is going to be good to give me a balance there of the nitrogen to potassium. The other thing this one has in it is 1% EDDHA iron. This is not something that I currently know is in any other turf fertilizer as far as that form of iron, which is good for higher pH soils. And in general, this has ammonium sulfate in it for higher pH soils and sulfate of potash, the low salt index form of potash that you want to use as well if possible. That's what I'm using today to get down a good shot of nitrogen here because I haven't fertilized anything on this yard since the spring. I'm gonna set this at five and a half. See how that works for my walk speed. So the fertilizing is done and what happens after this is that I'll make another application about two to three weeks from now, that'll probably be mid-September, and then I will do at least one more application. Sometimes if I have bluegrass or ryegrass or something that wants a little more nitrogen, this is when I do my nitrogen feeding of my lawns is in the fall. So sometimes I'll do three applications, but depending on how aggressive you wanna get, you wanna get really aggressive and start to really push your lawn this fall. It's a great time to do that because it came out of that summer stress. You give it some time now in those optimal temperatures, the cool evening, the somewhat warm days here in the fall and you're feeding it you're keeping up with your mowing you are going to see it really really look good by the end of this season and then it goes to sleep for the winter time and comes back in the spring stronger than ever so that's really the plan with fall feeding that's what I'm gonna be doing also as I mentioned this is the start of the lawn season for cool season lawn so if you want to get a whole season program you want to understand what needs to go on fall spring off season all of that stuff I do have a cool season guide and right now I will run a sale on that for $20 haven't run this sale at all this season, but since this is the start of the cool season lawn calendar, let's go ahead and run a sale on that for $20. If you'd like to grab that, it's gonna give you a whole season program on my recommendations and what I do to make my yard look the best that it can be. So that is getting yourself prepared for fall and getting the first application down. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll see you next time.